Welcome to, yes, it's the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. It's got to be the best fishing show on YouTube, surely by now. Over 2 million viewers, my God, it's rising like it's going crazy. But, in amongst those 2 million, there's quite a few people, a lot of youngsters say, how do you make the bread and the brown ground bait that was invented by moi? You take some bread and you take some bran and you mix it together with water and you throw it in and the fishes eat it. Now I thought about it, I thought, you know what, there's a, probably a bit more to it than meets the eye or meets the ear, if they're listening. And let me explain to you roughly. It's more of a beginner's if you're an expert, you know it all, switch off, don't worry. Most of our fish in our lakes and rivers will come under the classification of a cyprinid. That means, how can I describe it? If you can imagine cattle and sheep and horses, they're grazing, you rarely see them in a field, just chilling, headset on, rocking around. They're eating, they've got their heads down, they're eating all the time. That's because they have a weaker stomach acid than let's say a predator. So on that principle they have to eat on the little and often basis, they do not swallow great big clumps of grass whole, they have to chew it, okay? So a predator has high acid content. Let's say a pike, or for instance like a snake, they're gonna grab something, swallow it whole, and by all that chewing business, it goes down the hatch, then they've gotta digest it. Well, they can probably go a few days, that, that protein to go into their blood and their body to be absorbed takes maybe two, three days, whatever the figures are. But basically, they can dissolve it quickly. Cyprinids can't, which is good for anglers, because that means they've got to eat on the little and often basis. The more times they eat, the more times we've got of trying to catch them, okay. They have what's called pharyngeal, or pharyngeal, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, throat teeth. But I know exactly what they look, look like because I had a pal, um, his name was Bob, he used to do a lot of uh, taxidermy. So obviously when he's slicing all the fish up, he used to pull all the implements out and say, look at this, look at that. And I used to keep some of them. Now then, I can only describe these throat teeth like fingers like this, and they're right in the back of the throat of the fish, and they are used to grind all the food up that they eat. All the cyprinids, the carp, the barbel, the roach, all those tents, that type of thing. They use these throat teeth to grind the food up to eat so their stomach acids react slower so they need to eat mm, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And that's good for us. So hopefully that describes to you what a cyprinid eats like. But my reasoning behind that is why would I throw a little bit of ground bait in if they're eating all the time, when they've eaten that, they're gonna clear off somewhere else and start eating again. I want to keep the fish in front of me. So that's why I use a cheap, cheap bracket, bulk ground bait of bread and bran. That's the mix I use. I'm not gonna go and get some expensive perfume stuff and just like throwing money in the water. Maybe if you're a match fisherman, you probably do need it to catch lots of little fish. Well, I can understand that. But for the average pleasure angler, he just wants to go, he wants the cheapest, the cheapest way you can go fishing Ball up the ground bait, throw it in the water. Brilliant. Bread and bran. But there's a few more tips I can give you. I'm going to tell you how to get, only you YouTubers know this, bread for nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying that. I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how to mix it up, give you a few tips, and maybe, maybe you'll catch a few extra fish from doing it. So it's how to make ground bait the cheap and easy, the totally awesome way. That's good, believe me. Oh, yeah. Get starting work. Ooh, nice chair. And this is where you go to get all that lovely free ground bait. Look at it, lovely bread. It's like concrete because a lot of bakers will give you their stale bread. You only have to ask them. Let's get back to the totally awesome garden and do some mixing up, see if we can't show you how to make this ground bait. Oh, it's free, I love it. All right, here we are at the totally awesome school. So everybody seated, everybody got their pens and papers and they're ready to take notes on how to make your own ground bait. I've been to the bakers, I've got my bread. You can go to the supermarket, you can buy cheap sliced bread. You can go through the bakers and you can get all this bread, stale, albeit stale, for nothing. Just ask politely. Now this one, 
Well, this is sliced bread, you can use a French stick. Now, this type of bread is very, very hard, usually usable only one day. I'm sorry? Uh, Smith, Smith at the back there. Stand up, stand up, Smith. What do you think's funny? What exactly do you think's funny? Okay, just sit down, and the rest of you can keep quiet or any gigging at all. Now, this is a French dick. There's nothing wrong with the French. Smith, and you others, you others. Smith, I believe you're the instigator in this. Stand up again. You will stay behind after school, and you will write out 500 times, I must not laugh at Mr. Pullen's French dick. Okay? Thank you. Sit down, keep quiet, the rest of the class, take notes, this is important. This is a French stick. It's a piece of bread. Now, let me explain to you. Sliced bread, in a packet, has a shelf life on it. Now, because it has moisture retained in that packet, if you open it up, this one, I've kept especially to show you, you will get, I think you can just see that there, Smith, Smith, be very, very careful. Pin mould. I said pin mould, Smith. Pin mould, okay? So the pin mould is a breaking down of the bread created by moisture in there. So, if you keep this bread, you need to keep it frozen when you buy it. But with... I won't ask you again, Smith. With the French stick, stick, stick with the French stick, it's very, very, very hard because all the moisture has dried out of there because it is just in a cellophane it is in there it is not sealed totally so all the moisture has been drained out of that you cannot you cannot possibly pin mold as well no you can't eat it and also it doesn't get pin mold so this stuff you can keep for weeks just somewhere dry you must keep it dry so how are you ever going to use this for ground paper it's hard. Let me show you how hard this is. Oh, please, Smith, please, please. Yes, indeedy. When this bread goes dry, it goes very, very hard indeed. Hard enough to play baseball with. Yeah. Home run, and now I'm going to tell you what to do with the French, the French neck. Smith, I told you again, I won't tell you twice. Whew. I haven't run that fast since I heard somebody say it was my round of drinks. Get all the French sticks together. Break them all up. Oh, mommy. Break them all up. Into little manageable pieces like this. Now then, always get another knee. Plastic ones on the NHS. A bucket of water. Here, se le voila, el bacito. That's Mexican for a bucket of water. About halfway full, about half full. Now, of course, these are all dried out. All these French loaves. I'm going to say French loaves. Yes, Smith. French loaves. They're going to rehydrate, they might take a while, but just pop them in, all like this, they're all going to flow. Now what you can do, rather than break your kneecap, is you can push them down like this, just hold them and you can feel them soaking out the water and bubbling away. And as you push them down, you can actually both see and hear them filling up with water, rehydration I call that. Please don't ask me to spell it. Soaking up the water that they have lost previously. Now, of course, with the sliced bread, you don't need to soak them so much, but all this takes very, very little time. You can go away and have a cup of tea or something. But already, look. Ooh, lovely fluffy ground bait. Look at this. Now, I'm going to pile these in here. 
let them all bubble out. I've got more water than I'm normally going to use on ordinary bread, but with stale bread, it doesn't matter because they are going to need a rehydrating. I think I will after all that baseball running around the garden. Let's get that in there. I love that sound of it filling up. All those bubbles tell me that I'm going to catch some fish later on this evening. Here we go. You can actually run a couple of buckets on the go at the same time. Right, for the sliced bread, tear it open. Ignore the pin mould, it won't hurt you. A little less water, maybe a quarter of a bucket. In goes the bread. A whole loaf there. Same principle, push it all down, mush it all up. Get it in there now. I've got a couple of baker shops that I know, and the guy gives me all that free bread. He also gives me oh, all the throwaway buns, all the lovely throwaway buns. And do you know what those buns have got on someone? Nothing but sort of seeds and bits and bobs that can all come off. Look, all little sesame seeds all over it. All oh, those little fishes love it. In it goes. And you can put cakes in, rolls in, anything you want in. There is a masterpiece of nature's engineering. Would you have a ham and cheese with that? You wouldn't, would you? No, no. You would have extreme tummy ache. Yes. Mr. Porcelain Telephone, here I come. Doesn't matter. It's all going to go in. Soak it all up. And you'll see what happens in about 10 minutes. At Graham Mark III. Oh, it's lovely and squishy. It's right squishy, that is. There we go. Right now, while that all that bread is rehydrating itself, oh, makes it feel like I'm having a facial. It's being rehydrated. I get my favourite ground bait. Tiny little bags. I only buy those cutie tiny little bags. You can get tiny weeny bags for two pounds fifty. Wrong. I buy my brown bait in El Giganticum Sex. And this for all those who keep asking us the questions. We're going to read this for you, people. I'm going to put my glasses on and have a tell you what it says. 20 kilos of brown. Now, I do use brown for shark fishing. Brown, it says, what ingredients it made of? Ingredients are wheat bran, crude fibre, 10%. It has a certificate number 35785. You get them from agricultural feed suppliers. Agricultural means creatures, animals, right? Feed, mm, food they eat, suppliers, that's where you buy it. Feed material, store in a cool, dry place and do not get it damp. It goes mouldy, as I discussed earlier. Anything with moisture and warmth that creates mould, it goes mouldy. Best before, February 13th. Ah, it's past its sell-by date. And I'm still using it, fish are still eating it. Okay, this is done by Clarks of Wantage Limited. Seven or eight pounds for this sack. And there, that's the main thing that gets all my emails knocked off now, look. It's done Clarks of Wantage. Wessex Mill, Mill Street, Wantage, Oxen. Phone numbers on there if anybody wants it. Phone them up, so that's what it is. And this is what it looks like, and this is my additive, which goes with everything. It's brand, okay? Thank goodness I got out of the way, and everybody now knows. Brand comes in a big sack, and it only costs about eight pounds for 20 kilos. <laughs> Let's get outside, and I'll give you another tip about that bread. Once the water's been absorbed into the bread, you can tip the bucket up, gently keep your hand over the top so it doesn't pour all over the lawn, otherwise you get lots and lots of little dicky birds come down in the next morning. Strain off that excess water, just let it drain out, or you can use a maggot and caster riddle, which is what we use when you want to riddle off casters from maggots. Yellow or brown appears to be the colour that you can buy. Put a good scoop into the caster riddle, just gently compress it a little bit and you can see immediately because it's got the holes it drains all that excess water out naturally of course you can just push down on top give it a little bit of a boost squeeze it all out it's all like a bit of a sponge really but you can see there if you do use the maggot riddle it's much easier to get the excess water out because 
you don't want too much you can't really fish with that as it is only very very close and I have done when it's very very sloppy there you can see the water pouring out of it and that bread just starting to firm up a little bit give it a little squeeze drain it all out now you're completely empty and you can see there's loads and loads of water and all that hard bread all that well it's really all the mostly the dry bread is starting to mush up nice and, and squishy you're going to get all different sizes into it as well um, big bits small bits little flakes when it's all been dried off like this back in the buckets fill it right up again it's dead easy as you can see i'll give it a good old mix up again now i'm going to split this split this into two in it goes bosh 50 50 because i'm going to need a bit of space in that bucket that's why i use two buckets for monsieur le bran a big double handful do not ask me what the culinary measurements of this are i have no idea it's just my double handfuls put the brand in like this you can see a really good whack good double handful it's going to soak up the rest of that moisture round and around we go stir it all up mix it up and make sure you get that brand down the bottom as well get it right down the bottom turn everything the bread over at the bottom is always going to be slightly damper than that on the top and mush it all together mix it all up and what i normally do we give it about 15 20 minutes or even longer so those particles of bran continue to soak up and whizzo here we go mix it up fast now that makes a nice squeezy ball of ground bait but i want that one on the far side to be a little bit stiffer and as you can see you just keep adding to it it's very very difficult to explain to people any form of measurement there's nothing magic about it you need to be able to feel what the texture of each ground bait ball is the relationship of the bread you know to the crust to any crumb you've got in there uh, and what the bran effect has on it okay so we're all well mixed up got it all lovely now but i would fish with that straight in the margin give it a good half an hour to soak up and that makes a really soft sloppy ball that I could throw just ball it up tight and toss it in 20-25 yards you know so so even like that that's squishy as soon as it hits the water bosh all apart little particles of brand spread out and feed the little fish that attracts them and the activity from that feeding brings in monsieur le tench carp and bream and other stuff as well not for rivers really for lakes but you might at some stage want to make that a little bit stiffer, a little bit stiffer, throw it a bit further. Or is it farther? I never know which way it is. Further, farther. A greater distance. If you want to throw it a greater distance. Then, secret weapon. Who we drop a porridge oats? Hey! Get some porridge oats. Now, if you mix these up on their own, they go very sticky and very gluey. So, do not use porridge oats on their own. I add it to the mix, hard to say how much, you have to feed it for a texture, then you have to go away and leave it, you've got to let those porridge oats actually soak up, because they're nice grains, they're nice grains, the fish feed on these as well, well of course they feed on them, we go down to the supermarket, pay money and eat them ourselves, obviously the fish will feed on them. Now I've got, what, over half a bucket of ground bait, bread and bran mixed together there, I'm going to add, now just watch, I've no idea how much I'm going to add, it's just what I fancy, but I will show you. Just scatter these loosely in my hands. See, quite big grains. They're big grains. Now, the fish will eat those on their own. You can't use them as hook bait too small. But, nevertheless, you can see, not only is it a binding agent, but that's what I use it basically for. It's a feed as well. It's a good feed as well. So, in there, I'm going to probably whack a good double handful. A good double handful, okay? I'll show the other bucket, because I'll tell you what I'm going to do with these a little later on now. Cost you next to nothing, a one kilo bag. And do you know what? I've still got some left. Oh, oh man. Oh dear. That's neat. I can feel already. I've probably got more than half in here. More than half a bucket. I might actually whack the rest of it in as well. But you've got to mix it and you've got to let it sort of soak up. It has to draw in the moisture because the brown flakes on their own will soak up. But oh, immediately, immediately. Now let me show you that one. That was a good one in this bucket. Look, look, that's much, much better texture. I could double the throwing distance with that one, easy. 
In fact, that's gone gluey, and it had, I mean, that's it literally in the minute I've been talking to you. So, this one, I might have made it a little bit more, so I might not have strained it off quite enough. A little bit more in there, a bit more in the other one, some over the workbench, just so it gives me something to sweep up. Yeah, it does want some actually, because a lot of the moisture, you know, is so right down the bottom. You've got to make sure you get right down the bottom and mix all that in. Now, this is the ground puller mix, it's already been copied. I've seen it being copied, some people copied it and mentioned, oh, you want to use porridge oats? I thought, ha ha, I wonder where they read that from. But that's what we're here for, help other people catch fish, that's what it's about. That still wants more, that's amazing. And it must be slightly wetter. This one, in the meantime, oh, much better. Whole different ball game, guys. Get this muck on my hands, I'll give you a big ball here. Look, this is what we used to use for bream. This is, this is, that's a small bream ball of ground but it's a small one we used to use well bigger than that now when i went to ireland we used to ke catch a lot of bream you would use uh, flake maize all the time for bream nothing else no fancy ground boats flake maize we'd rack up these and pre-bake the night before and i'll be honest with you we would put in 50 to 60 of these balls Forget maggots, ground bait is, is, is just a feed to draw them in. You feed with maggots on the hook if you want. This is to get them in and hold them in the swim. 50 to 60 of these. I'm not saying do that in the UK. This is an island where they have gargantuan shoals of bream that need holding in one spot. So now that, what we're going to do is just going to go away. We're going to leave this to let those porridge oats just soak up. And that one, I must have left some water in the bottom. He's getting the treatment. In you go, my son. Mix that up. That's better. Right, that mix is now nice and firmed up, ready to go fishing. Couple more tips. You can throw your ground bait out by hand, or you may wish to use a catapult. Now then, especially youngsters, we've all you know seen how far can we get that boilie, how far can we get that maggot, how far can we catapult that uh, ball of ground bait. But the problem being, with these ones, which is a soft one, like a maggot pole, it's got lots of little holes in it, right, that lets it go through the air quicker. You put your ground bait ball in there, okay? You're already loaded, let's wipe your fingers. I'm not gonna catapult it inside my workshop, but give you the principle. There you are, you're all ready to go, you're ready to whack a do and let rip. Two things that you wanna remember. As you squeeze that, the pouch itself, you can see that right there, instead of being circular like that, as you squeeze it, it narrows down and it squashes this ball of ground bait. Now, if I take that out now, just to give you an idea, that is no longer round, is it? As you can see, that is going to whistle through, possibly break up. In fact, a 90% chance it's gonna break up. But worse, it's gonna, because it's at an angle like that and flat, it's gonna fire off in the wind. It's gonna catch a breeze and bzz, just like throwing stones, skimming them over the water. It's gonna shoot off to one side. So you want a perfect ball. So these catapults are for loose feed, not for round balls. Say again, as you squeeze it, it will compress like that. And then the ball's gonna probably explode. Maybe you can get away with not buying one of these and just for close range. But to be honest, rather than splatter it all over the place and then the fish feed all over the place, I'd much sooner just throw them in by hand. What you need is a proper ground bait catapult, which as you can see has a much, much wider neck on it. It's much more rigid, it's wire, it's got a good fist grip there. This one I won't catapult much because I haven't got the elastic to it. But what it has got is a rigid base that does not compress. Got a little finger hole there, so you can imagine it. Use your imagination. Is You can stretch that back like this, really wide, really wide like this. Stretch it right back, pop a silicon tube in, keep your face away from it. And as you pull back under pressure, this will not compress. Your circular should be perfectly circular. That way, when you catapult out, you can plant them pretty much all in the same place, providing you use the same amount of power on the elastic. So there you go, you can see it, I'll just show you. Ball of ground bait in that little hard capsule, and that's gonna go out perfectly symmetrical and circular. Should land in the same spot, keep them all the same size. Don't vary your sizes if they're the same size, and you use the same pull on the elastic, the same elevation you should be able to go bomb, bomb. Now the other little tip is, roll them all up in a group beforehand, put about, I don't know, six or eight in. I use four times as big as that when I start. And just 
get them ready so you go bang see where that one goes pick the ball up bang aim for the same circle the same ripples don't catapult one out la, 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 la. put the headset on Ooh, da, 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 da. Ooh, now where did i where did i catapult that was it there was it there now don't do that you want them in the same five or six foot area where you're going to put your two rods out there so rigid ones however if you want really stiff ground bait i can't help you you will have to go to the tackle shop much as it shocks me and pay, what was this in olden time, old money, £2.50, pure white crumb. Now years ago we used to use for barbel golden bread crumb, which set like tarmac on the M3 motorway, and coarse white crumb, which we mixed in about 75% uh, white crumb, 25% golden bread crumb, cupped it out, fast water, stones in the middle, maggots in the middle, closed it up, bombed it out, caught lots of barbel. That's the way it was. I don't even think you can get that stuff now. They do, some shops still supply this. Now, if I mix this and I squeeze this hard, I will now be attempting the new British world record for the furthest anybody could ever catapult a half pound ball of ground bait. Oh ye of little faith, who think I'm joking? I just not. Right people, I've made up my, my high impact, medium velocity balls of white crumb ground bait. I have my Catapult, now you've all heard of catapults, but this one's different. This one's called a a twatapult. Yes, not a catapult, a twatapult. And do you know what? You don't just use it for one hand, you step into it and wear it. But first, I've got to test it out. This is a prototype, could be dangerous, could be military, military precision with this. I've got a heap of flower pots over there. I'm gonna see if it even has a hint of knocking them over with not even a full-size board of ground bait. Accuracy is everything. Give me a moment to step into my um, my rubber bits, won't you? A little tip before I do climb into my little rubber thingy, my little twatapult. If you do want to catapult these out, even with a rigid cup, just wet it first and you'll find that it, it goes a lot further and you don't get bits splattering everywhere. Right, let's lock and load, baby. Oh, oh, oh I love it. Could be the Russians or the Chinese next. Maybe we want to know how to make these. All right, take a bit of distance. There's my ball. Good luck, baby. And load. Target within range. Okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Record time, record time, totally awesome record. White ground bait, it's going. Deep breaths. Hit. And shh. Low. Full power. Uh oh. Okay. Um, there's only one thing to do when you hear a noise like that. That's right, leg it. Oh. I just made it back. Whew. Somebody told me it was that mad presenter's car, the other guy, you know the one if you watch my films? That one. Couldn't have happened to a nicer bloke. Right, on a serious note, let's finish off when we started making ground bait. Get some plastic bags. I've got two, well, sort of three quarter buckets of ground bait there. Obviously, I'm not going to use it in one go, but with ground bait, because it's water-based, just get a whack load of it in old carrier bags, take it out, fill your bags up like this, put it in the freezer, you're ready to rock and roll whenever you want. Look, there it is. Give it a couple of bangs. You can play games with it, make any shape you want. Just spin it up. Mind you, I've got a chest freezer as well, so I've got a big chest freezer. Mums might not like it, and wives might not like it. It's a big old lump. I mean, you could take the you could take the roast beef joint out, I suppose. You know, put this in. It's far more important than food. Get it in the freezer. Bob your uncle, Charlie's your aunt. I'm ready to go fishing. But do, guys, remember this will be solid. Don't take it out the morning you go fishing. Take it out at least lunchtime the day before you go fishing. And don't bring it back if you want. You know, throw it in the water. That's what it's there for. You know what that's cost me. Barely a pound, and I've got about seven pounds of ground bait there. So there we go, all packed up, nice and ready to go, in the freezer. 
There's a lot of stuff in this freezer. I really need to go fishing again. In the freezer it goes, I'll get the others in. So that little mix up, bit of fun doing it as well for you guys. I've got four days with four sessions at least of fishing there. Just cost me a few pounds, buddy, a few pounds. Hope you've enjoyed it. You've been watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show yet again. There'll be more coming your way hopefully soon. Enjoy making your ground bait. It's a bit of fun. And I'll tell you what, does it catch fish? Check these out. See how stupid I really am, or perhaps not. <laughs>